half the times whenever businesses fail and their social media strategy isn't working, they don't actually know who they're targeting. When you think of Gucci, you don't think of TikToks, you would think of uh, probably Instagram. Why is it failing? What are your goals? And they're like, I don't know. And you're like, and then you wonder. Hi guys, I'm Caitlin. Welcome to today's episode. Today's episode is gonna be covering why your social media isn't working. So we all know that feeling of you're doing everything correctly, everything should be in place, but you're not really seeing results. You're not really growing and you're just feeling kind of stuck and confused. There's four reasons of usually why your social media strategy or social media channel in general just isn't working. This could be on one platform or multiple platforms. So the first one is your actual product or service. Oftentimes, you're contracted out to deliver a service and a product, but the products that you are trying to display on the social media channels may not actually be the best product. So this is something that we aren't really responsible for. It's unfortunate that you know we might be representing a poor product or service, and through social media and reviews and comments, we can determine you know the feedback with this. Maybe the product really just isn't that good compared to our competitors. We need to lower the price. Price, we need to enhance customer service, anything along those lines. Marketing is not a product. It is not our responsibility to have an amazing product. Our responsibility is to drive traffic to that product or service via social media, not necessarily selling that product if we can't control, you know, the customer feedback being ignored, etc. So whenever these kinds of things occurs, we can incorporate a focus group, maybe a survey, an interview of past customers, kind of the common consensus of the product, the service. You know, we have limited input at the end of the day, but but what we can do for our bosses or the people who contracted us out is give them reports on customer reviews if they're saying that that so-and-so product isn't as good as their competitor and the price point isn't there, the timing of it being available isn't there, it could be itchy or annoying or incomplete or inefficient or easily breakable. Anything like that is important to tell your bosses. Even though as marketers we just kind of have less of an input in regards to that, our job is to just drive traffic to that site. We can't be the people who are held responsible responsible for necessarily selling that product, although we can help and give feedback to those who employed us. This could go into things like we're doing things on our end, but we need operations and sales to make sure they're following through the customer experience, the delivery, the packaging. Those kinds of behind the scenes are kind of what can make and break a product. You just want to make sure that you're driving traffic on your social media platforms or any type of marketing platform as a whole. <sighs> Okay, number two is your target audience. So in order to determine your target audience, you need to do your data, your research, your analytics about everything. You need to know who your demographic is, what time they're on your platform. Anything to do with your target market is really important. Half the times whenever businesses fail and their social media strategy isn't working, they don't actually know who they're targeting. So many people will contract you out and be like, let's get as many people as we can into the sales funnel as possible. And that unfortunately just isn't really the case. You might be able to eventually get there to where that the, your product or service has been so productive in a smaller group maybe you can start expanding something kind of like Starbucks now they can kind of appeal to multiple people but even things like Starbucks who has kind of dominated the market they still have target markets and target strategies depending on different campaigns different seasons or just their marketing strategy as a whole so if you don't have a target audience you can run into a lot of issues what if you're literally marketing to the wrong crowd what if your tone of voice doesn't match up with who you're targeting so all of these things with your target market can lead to determining your color your theme your tone of voice the timing what time you're gonna post are these people up late are they do they go to bed early a younger crowd would definitely be more interested in memes and colors and infographics TikTok, reels they might like jokes versus an older crowd who maybe wants more of a serious tone more of an update kind of informational educational just like an academic verbiage all of these things are really important to focus on almost every single social strategy that I've seen one of the biggest things is kind of like determining a target market I've even experienced this with myself where I want to get as many sales as possible so I'm kind of trying to attract kind of just like a raw category so it can kind of go and waver both ways but really you need to narrow it down and just kind of engage those people because at the end of the day you want loyal customers you don't want to just have a little bit here and there and then they're not even gonna come back that's not as efficient as having reaching 100 people and they come once is honestly not as efficient as making 30 people come multiple 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 times all right so our next thing is gonna be focusing on a platform so we live in an era where TikTok is booming Twitter's coming back we have snapchat we have Pinterest we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have all these little things that are evolving. 
and kind of catching the eye of everyone. But that does not mean our marketing strategy needs to completely waver. We need to be focusing on two social medias, unless you're maybe a full-time co content creator and you're literally contracted in to be perfecting everything. Right now, a lot of people kind of just do a mediocre job at maybe like four, but they hone in to two. You want to be known for like one or the other. And then for those external ones, so like if you're focusing on your Instagram and your Facebook, but you still want to have a presence on TikTok, obviously I'm not saying don't focus on other platforms. You want to kind of maybe repurpose your content or whenever you do YouTube videos, you can kind of use bits and pieces in those YouTube videos absolutely and post TikToks and Reels literally made of something that's already been created. All you have to do is edit it. So if you're full time, that makes sense to try to kind of broaden your horizons, but those who wear multiple hats, you need to hone in on your two social media platforms and I promise you, you will see a difference. If you are struggling with your social media strategy right now, really think about it and be honest with yourself. Have you been trying to focus on everything and stay on top of trends for every platform? It's literally impossible and you just, you can't do it. I mean, set your mind high, but you gotta be focusing. So we like to call this kind of like giving up your crown. You wanna be able to have your crown for some things and then you gotta just give it up for other things. Like me personally, I wouldn't wanna be necessarily blowing up on TikTok. I would rather do YouTube. And it could also be a personal preference. It can be strategic where your analytics are better, you do better, there's more people on there, or it can be, you know, just a personal preference of what you know you can really deliver content-wise and represent your brand well. And then with this, you wanna be able to measure them and be patient. You need to be able to measure those platforms and see what works, see what doesn't, how can you improve? I really like to focus on Instagram and Facebook personally and in any business that I've ever done. Facebook and Instagram have always shown results for my work and it's easy to track. You can be patient with your people, see what happens, capture a couple in, maybe a year later, they're extremely loyal customers and your sales have increased. The summary of that is basically choose your two platforms, really hone in on them and then you probably will see success. Or I guess you could also contract somebody out and maybe focus on everything, but even then you want people to think like, oh, this company, I'm gonna go on here. Like when you think of Gucci, you don't think of TikToks, you would think uh, probably Instagram. When you think of like luxury things, you might go to Pinterest even and not even Instagram. Whenever you think of Slim Jim, a lot of people think of Twitter. Whenever you think of beer companies, a lot of people think of ads and like Super Bowls and commercials, not so much like Facebook. So that's the point that these really successful brands usually do have one or two focuses. So people smaller like us, why would we focus on multiple, multiple, multiple? Although it's not bad to get exposure, just kind of long term focusing down, it's important to kind of really narrow your goals and your focus so you can achieve higher goals. Speaking of goals, that's our next topic. Our final one out of the four is going to be measuring your goals, setting SMART goals, but ultimately not even just setting them, like being able to measure them and improve and adapt your goals to kind of what's new. So half the time whenever you ask a client, why is it failing? What are your goals? And they're like, I don't know. And you're like, and then you wonder, okay, how are you supposed to even track success if you don't even know what you're tracking? How are you supposed to achieve success? Because who knows, maybe you have achieved some success and you just don't know it. You might honestly be hitting your goal, especially if you're contracted as a social media person or anyone, a strategist, social media strategist. You could be hitting those goals and if you're not tracking them, you're not doing your job properly. Even if you're achieving them, just tracking them in general is a part of the job. It's a part of what makes social media strategists important. So you wanna be knowing if you wanna be tracking engagement, if you wanna be tracking reach, your click-through rate, your conversions. It is our job to be able to track things and deliver that to our clients and tell them what's happening, tell them the goals, tell them what's measurable, but you also need your client to tell you what their goals are so we can keep track of them. This is kind of the same as you know, going to the doctor, asking IT, like we don't speak that language. Like we don't know all the doctor terms or the IT terms. And we can't expect our clients to know this. We need to be able to speak about the algorithm and their social media and be able to deliver this to them and not just expect them to know everything. We need to know if we're tracking things, what, what engagement is, what conversion is. You know, it, we just need to be delivering them numbers and the progress. We don't need to be explaining everything to them and it's really important. You must have business goals as a business. If you don't have business goals in regards to marketing, that makes our job absolutely harder and unfortunately if you are in a position like that you need to be able to look at your analytics and kind of determine it for yourself um, in regards to what the boss wants and make sure you kind of run it by them and prove to them and speak the language and explain it to them so they know that like you are achieving things you don't want to just be like oh or well i figured out that algorithm and our engagement is up 200 percent but our reach is down and then they're like well why is reach down when really engagement is more important so are they focusing on brand loyalty engagement reach sales if you're focusing on sales and you look at your click-through 
accelerate your website conversions, driving traffic. All these things are extremely important and we all need to be able to focus on them and deliver them to our clients. So the four things are the product and service really just might not be that good. Know your target audience, focus on two platforms and measure and set goals. A couple bonus tips that I would like to add are monthly reports. Monthly reports are extremely important because we can track our progress, we can track their progress and we can kind of show everything that we've done and build our own portfolios at the same time. And then the last bonus tip would be also focusing on the customer experience. This goes hand in hand with kind of like the product or service networking. But as a company, like you can tell your client, like maybe we need to focus on this based on these reviews. That's really important just kind of like as a business objective as a whole is to focus on customer experience depending on what product you're serving. If people aren't liking, you know, the checkout message or their emails or they're getting lots of spam or it's an in-person thing and the people are mean, those are really important and ultimately the marketers can't do anything about that besides tell our clients, hey, like the customers need a better experience. So thank you guys. Those are all of my tips and tricks on what to do whenever your social media isn't working. It's almost always those four things. If you feel like it, please like and subscribe. I really want to be able to kind of turn this into something fun. It's like a hobby of mine and I want to be able to deliver all these useful tips that I've learned through experience to you guys. So I would love the support and then I can do my fun little marketing videos from here on out. Y'all have a fabulous day and thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.